chapter 8, reactions of alkenes. So we talked about the other aspects, elements of unsaturation. We talked about naming. We talked about hybridization for alkene. We talked about how to prepare alkenes. Now, if you have alkene, what type of reactions? If you start al with alkene as the reactant, what other functional groups you can prepare? What compounds with the with other um, functional group you can make. So, uh, the difference between alkene and alkane is the presence of the pi bond. So you had alkane or alkene, you have a carbon-carbon double bond, which is made of one sigma and one pi bond. So you have a sigma bond and pi bond. Sigma bond is a single bond, or if you have single bond, is sigma bond. Uh, pi bond is weaker than uh, sigma bond. So to break the pi bond is easier. So you could break pi bond, or whenever you have to break a bond, uh, you can, you can uh, break the pi bond before you can break the uh, sigma bond. Why do you have to break a bond? Sometimes is you already have like four bonds and you bring a, um, let's say you bring electrophile here, you bring something to attack this carbon, to form bond with the carbon. And when it forms bond with the carbon, then it's going to be, um, it's going to make the carbon five bonds. And when you have five bonds, it makes the carbon uncomfortable. So this is going to break over the other elements. Sometimes you bring electrophile, and with electrophile, uh, how it works, carbon-carbon double bond now is sharing four electrons. So this area of the molecule is electron-rich. So you have high density of electron here. And drawing the error, again, is from electron-rich to electron-poor. But basically what is happening, this pair of this electrophile is looking for electron. But by convention, we are drawing always from electron rich to electron poor when it comes to the, the direction for the for the arrow. But in reality, the pair of electron is going to help this electrophile because this electrophile is looking for electrons. So if you have like a H plus, they can come and form one with this um, carbon and your H plus is looking for electron. So when you bring the electrophile first, it's going to consume the pair of electron from the pi bond to form the new bond. Because when you bring electrophile, trying to form bond with one of these two carbons doesn't have any electrons. So a pair of electron from the pi bond is consumed to form the bond. Now your electrophile is going to form bond with this carbon or the other carbon. And it doesn't matter if it's symmetrical. If it's symmetrical, you will learn. But if it's symmetrical, is that it doesn't matter. So it's going to form bond with one of these uh, carbons. So what's happening to the other carbon? The other carbon is losing the pi bond. The carbon that is forming bond with the electrophile has eight electrons. It used to have eight electrons in combination of two single bond, one double bond. Now, after forming bond with the electrophile, is going to have four single bonds. So octet satisfied. But the other carbon is missing a bond. Missing a bond meaning missing pair of electrons. And missing pair of electrons is going to give plus charge to that carbon. So you have now carbocation. So you get the carbocation intermediate. And how do you stabilize the carbocation in this case? You are going to bring nucleophile, which is electron rich to form bond with the carbocation, and the new bond is going to form. What's the net? The type of reaction is called a reaction. What is happening in this addition reaction for alkene or carbon-carbon double bond, a pi bond breaks, two sigma bond is going to form. What is happening to the structure of the molecule, hybridization of the molecule, you have a sp2 hybrid, is going to change to sp3 
hybridization here. So you're going from sp2 to sp3. And stepwise, what is happening, electrophile is going to form bond first, then nucleophile comes in. So first electrophile, second nucleophile, because you have carbon-carbon double bond, you have an electron reach center here. So it makes sense for electrophile to come in first. So step one, pi bond attacks the electrophile. Step two, nucleophile attacks the carbocation. And uh, when you say attack, is basically sometimes it's coming to rescue, it's not attack. Like when the nucleophile comes here, it's actually going to stabilize this, this uh, plus charge here. Because carbocation with the plus charge is not stable. It's very reactive. So the forms bond with the nucleophile is going to be um, is going to be stabilized. So when we, like, everyday talking with the reactor, we say is attacked by the nucleophile, that attack, it can also be looked at as it's coming to rescue, is coming to stabilize, is coming to form the final product, which we need for the, uh, for the reaction. A type of reactions that you could see, what type of product you could reaction to add if you add water, if you remove water, we saw that we remove H and we remove OH, right? We remove H and we remove OH. If we add water, we are going to add H and we add OH. So the final product is going to be alcohol. This is, we are going to study each one separately. You do hydrogenation. But when you are studying the reaction, please make sure you know the name for the reaction. And then use a flashcard to write the name for the reaction. You write the general name of the reactant and product. So you say hydrogenation. Your reactant is alkene. Your reagent is hydrogen. You need a catalyst in this case. And you are going to get alkene as a product. For hydration, Alkene is the reactant, the reagent is water, you must have a catalyst, and then your product is going to be alcohol. Uh, you are going to memorize as a case by case. Some reactants require catalyst, others do not require catalyst, and we have to memorize that. Uh, when you do hydroboration, oh, hydroxylation, you add two hydroxyl groups. So this is general reaction. You are adding two hydroxyl group. You are doing oxidative cleavage. You cleave the carbon-carbon double bond. You add is oxidative cleavage. That means you are adding oxygen each side of the double bond. So it, you're, you have a carbon-carbon double bond. You cut through. That's the cleavage part. There's oxidative cleavage. You add oxygen to this side and oxygen to the other side. So you get oxidative cleavage. So you start from alkene, you can end up with aldehyde or ketone, carboxylic acid, depends on the solvent that you are using, and you will learn in detail. The, then you have like epoxidation, formation of epoxide. So functional group for epoxide. And uh, your reagent for epoxide, what should be, you are going to learn about that also. So... This is like kind of a summary of the reactions and introducing what you are going to learn in this chapter. You see that already we talked about many new terms, and that makes chapter 8 the fundamental chapter for reactions of organic compounds. Because if you learn to, to how to learn reactions, so you have to learn how to learn and have to study a chemical reaction, uh, based on what is the reactant, what is the reagent, what is the product, what is the mechanism of reaction. If you have a minor product, major product, which one is the minor, which one is the major product, and uh, what makes the major product. Sometimes, what makes the major product? If you have choice of two product, product what makes the one of the product to be a major product? You might have two answers, but I want to, I expect to have one of them at least. Stability, more stable, more stable what? 
the two answer comes from stability is correct. Stable what? A more stable intermediate, right? More stable intermediate can yield major product, and also more stable product can yield major product. So you can change the condition of the reaction sometimes to look for more stable product. Or if you don't apply heat, which is like you are controlling, you are in control. So when you are doing chemical reaction, you have to think yourself that you are working in a lab. It's your own lab. You are trying to make this product. Now, how could you make this product best way, more selective product? How would you change the condition of the reaction to get that specific product? Okay. Uh, for like today or tomorrow, you could think of, well, you have to get good grade on this. You have to learn this reaction. But if you learn like long term, you think about how you can make your reaction more uh, efficient. That means faster reaction, uh, less byproduct. You're taking organic lab at the same time you are taking organic lecture. So you know separation techniques is time consuming. So if you choose proper condition for your reaction, you eliminate the product. So we get like E2 with SN2. It says SN2 is a byproduct of E2. So if you choose your reagent properly, you are going to get more pure compound. And if you get more pure compounds, sometimes you get only one product, then you don't have to do purification. You don't have to t spend the time and money on purifying the, the product. So you have to think out of the box. And don't be intimidated by organic chemistry and the organic reactions. Learn them to make better decisions. So if you think that way, it's going to make you a little bit more comfortable and not just worry about the, the grade that you are going to get. I mean, grade is good for your GPA, but learning how to learn and thinking how to make better reactions is going to benefit you in long term more. And you have seen the troubles already in the lab when your compound is not pure, is going to behave differently then you have to purify it and you have to learn everything about purification, extraction, recrystallization, distillation, all of that because the product is not single product. If your product is always a single product, then you don't have to learn everything about purification of the, uh, of the product. So you just learn to be better engineer or chemical engineer, how to design or better chemistry on your experiment properly, not to get in trouble later. Other reactions is halogenation of reactions. So halogenation, you're adding halogens. So if you if you listen to what you are saying, halogenation, you're adding halogen. Hydrogenation, you're adding hydrogen. Hydration, you're adding. But remember, when you're adding water, you're not adding H2O to one carbon. You're adding H to one carbon and OH to another carbon. And also know that when you are at when you are doing addition reaction for alkene, when you break the pi bond, you cannot leave one carbon hanging with no bond. So basically, you have to satisfy the full carbon. You have to add one electrophile to one carbon, nucleophile to the other carbon, or two of the same to one to each carbon. So when you are adding an H and you are adding H, it's not electrophile, nucleophile, but you are adding two sigma bonds. You have to satisfy both carbons. So when you say hydro hydroxylation, OH is a hydroxyl group. So this is not hydration, it's not adding H and OH, adding OH group to OH group. So when you say halogenation, meaning you're just adding halogen. When you say addition of HX or hydrohalogenation, that means you're adding hydrogen and you're adding halogen. So HX is Hydrohalogenation. Look at the name. Um, cyclopropanation. What does cyclopropanation mean? That means that you have your carbon carbon double bond and you want to make a cyclopropane. So you're adding one carbon to make cyclopropane. Cyclopropanation. That's why I said 
you make a flashcard, in one side of the flashcard, write the name for the reaction, and the other side, write what is your reactant, what's your reagent, what would be the part, and then example of it. And you also need to learn about the mechanism of these reactions, step by step, what is happening. Addition of HX. So we want to add HX. HX, I'm going to give an example of HX, like an HBR. Okay. Is this polar or non-polar? HBR is polar. Since you said it's polar, I'm just going to give you the answer as a BR is a minus and this is a plus. Is this acid, base, or neutral compound? HBr, hydrobromic acid is actually very strong acid. Okay, um, so if we have HBr as add, do I need the acid catalyst in this reaction, or I can just use the HBr? So it's kind of you you learn this way. HBr already has acidic H hydrogen to bring H2SO4 in this case because this can act as the catalyst also. It's going to be needed for formation of product and it's going to be used in the reaction. So I'm just using HBr. What is the first step in addition reaction? Is addition of electrophile. Which one is the electrophile? The H plus or the Br? Electrophile is looking for electrons so it's going to be h plus so h plus is going to attack first but when you draw the arrow which way would you draw the arrow you are going to say h plus is coming to attack the the carbon carbon double bond or you would draw from electron reach to electron poor you always draw from electron reach to electron poor so you say this pi bond is going to be consumed to form bond between one of these carbons and hydrogen. Okay, one of these carbons is going to take the hydrogen, and in order to take the hydrogen, it has to consume the pi bond. What happens to the other carbon? The other carbon lost the pi bond. That means lost the electron, and if carbon loses the electron, is going to gain plus charge. So. When one of these carbons form bond with hydrogen, the other carbon is going to gain the plus charge. So basically, formation of carbocation. What's the next step? Next step is attack. So first electrophile, then it's going to be nucleophile. So nucleophile, which is the Br minus in this case, that's your nucleophile because it has negative charge and is looking for nucleus, is looking for positive charge, is going to come and form bond with the carbocation. Now you have your product. What is the product? Product is going to be alkyl halide because you added hydrogen and you add Br. Hydrogen does not count as functional group, but Br does. So you change your alkene to alkyl halide, your final product. Okay, so electrophile comes in first, then the nucleophilic attack. The addition reaction. The type of reaction is called addition reaction. So examples, you start with um, ethene, you add H. H is going to add to one carbon and Cl is going to add to the other carbon. You are looking with the symmetrical alkene. In this case, you are looking for symmetrical alkene. H will add to one carbon, Br will add to the other carbon. It doesn't matter which carbon is added. I'm emphasizing on symmetrical because if it is then you have to decide which carbon would take H and which carbon would take the Br. One carbon would take H, the other carbon would take the I. 
and then you end up with aortic cyclohexane. So same distribution around sp2. This I, I said it as a symmetrical. Same distribution of the alkyl group around the sp2. So it doesn't matter which one takes hydrogen and which one takes the um, carbon or the CL. Of this alkene is not symmetrical around carbon carbon. Um, double bond, the number of alkyl groups is not the same. Now, you have to decide, would the carbon 1 take hydrogen or the carbon 2 would take the hydrogen? Because if hydrogen is taken by 1, Cl would go to the other. So if C, uh, um, hydrogen attaches carbon on the left side, Cl is going to be on the right side and you get this product. If hydrogen attaches to the right carbon, Cl is going to attach to the left carbon and you get product. We have choice for two different products. That means we have major product and minor product. What makes the major product to be major product? The stability of intermediate, so intermediate stability. What is the intermediate that is forming first is the carbocation. So which carbocation is going to be more stable? Tertiary, secondary, primary. The order of stability is the key. You need to know those. So tertiary is going to be most stable carbocation. Why tertiary is more stable carbocation? Okay. Carbocation is a plus charge with the plus charge. The groups that are attached to carbocation, they are electron donor group. So these are giving electrons, electron donor giving electrons. If it's moving away electron as we think, but these are electron donor. If they give electron to this carbon, it's going to stabilize this carbocation. This is like a, you know, if I'm, I don't have money and I do have like three siblings. And it's not just the siblings that is going to uh, support me. Having sibling is good, but having generous sibling is more important. So if I have three generous siblings, siblings i'm not going to stay and sleep hungry at least someone one of them is going to come and help me bring me food if i'm going through rough time like financially i'm in the financial situation and i only have one siblings only one brother here or sister that can help me who is better off A or B, if both of them are going through financial situation, B is going to be better off because B has three generous siblings that all three of them are supporting and they are giving electrons. When it comes to this primary, there is only one other carbon, one other sibling who can't help financially who can bring and support this C plus. So that makes tertiary to be more stable than secondary when it's a carbocation. Why? It all goes to the nature of this alkyl groups. Alkyl found to be electron donor. What does carbocation need? Needs electrons, needs support, needs electrons. So the more of these good people around, more comfortable is going to be this poor guy at the time of financial situation. If you deal with the C plus only, if it's a C, is there any supporting group? So that's why metal group, it should never form 
a CH3 plus because if it does form, it's on its own. There is no alkyl group attached to it. There is no support. And that's why CH3, that is known as a methyl carbocation, should never go through SN1 mechanisms or formation of carbocation as intermediate in a chemical reaction because it's very unstable. I hope it did help you to understand why carbocation, if it's tertiary, is more stable than secondary and more stable than primary. If it's carboanion, is different, okay? Is different, uh, different situation. When it's carboanion, since I talked about the siblings, let me tell you also this. You have carboanion, that means you have pair of unshared electron on this carbon. This, it's like, these groups are giving electrons. If they are there to give electron, does this thing need, this carbon with the negative charge needs electron? It doesn't need electron because it has extra electrons. It has excess of electrons, has negative charge. So this group that they are giving electron is going to bother the carbon with the negative charge. The less of these you have around, the less of these groups you have around, the, the electron donors you have around, is going to make this more comfortable because it doesn't need electron. And if the electrons comes around, they bring negative charge. You have negative charge here. They are going to just cause just a spheric hindrance. It's not going to make it uncomfortable. But when it's a plus charge, the more alkyl group around it, more stable. Now, going back to which one is the choice, and that's the... I'm going to stop at 940. Okay. Which one is the choice? For hydrogen to be on carbon number one or carbon number two? Understand that if hydrogen goes to carbon one, carbon two would take the plus charge. And if hydrogen goes to carbon two, hydrogen one is going to take the plus charge. Which one is to be more stable? A or B? Which one is more stable? A is more stable because A would give you tertiary carbocation, B would give you primary carbocation. And because this is a primary carbocation and this is the tertiary carbocation, you have your major product coming from more stable, intermediate, and this would be your major product. This major product is known as Markonikov addition. And what is the Markonikov product or Markonikov addition? Saying when you are adding HCl or HBr or HX or H2O, H will add to the carbon that has more H. Rich gets richer. That is the case of Markonikov product. And when you say rich gets richer, it's just for addition of hydrogen. Hydrogen will add to the carbon that has more hydrogen. And the other piece, whatever that X is, is going to add to the other carbon. So rich gets richer. Markonikov addition. Hydrogen added to this carbon, CH2. And Cl is added to the other carbon. If this happens, we have the Markonikov product. If the condition is a catalyst is brought in to reaction and the opposite happens, if hydrogen is added to the other carbon and we get a product, then we have anti-Markonikov product. So you are going to learn or, and hear this Markonikov anti more than the Sasev and Hoffman product, because we repeat this more, 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 more in this chapter. And by the time you're done with your chapter eight, if you don't know Markonikov, you're not ready for your organic two. But I make sure to repeat enough time that if you are interested to learn about Markonikov, you learn about Markonikov uh, addition and time Markonikov addition. Everything goes back to. A stability of intermediate. Okay?
stability of the intermediate. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording.